Hey everyone, Pastor George here, and today's mailbag question is from the same pair of questions I talked about, talked about last week, but this is the second of the questions that ended up being related to the first, which was about the disciples' age. So if you want to find out what age the disciples were around the late teens, early 20s, and my reasoning why that is, you can look at last week's mailbag question. But this week, it concerns the fish story. And uh, this is one of the stories I've been asked about quite a bit by by people. One, because it's kind of a strange, weird story. Uh, and because it's one of those stories that it doesn't tell you the moral, or and you don't really understand what's going on unless you kind of look at the context of it. But let's look at the, at the text itself so you guys can actually hear it. So this comes from Matthew chapter 17, and it's at the very end, 24 through 27. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma temple tax came to Peter and asked, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked, from whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes, from their own children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. All right, so what's going on here? Well, in the story itself, right, Peter is asked by these people who are collecting the uh, temple tax uh, about whether or not Jesus pays, and Peter said he does, and he goes home, and before he can even say everything, Jesus already knows what's taking place, right? And so he says, he asks him a question about, well, who is who has the right to collect the tax and who does the person who collect it from. So, uh, the, you know, the king or the government is the one who collects the taxes and who they collect it from, they collect it from others, right? They don't take it from their own kids in the sense of, you know, if a king in the ancient world, you know, he wouldn't tax his children, he taxes his subjects, and Peter responds to that. And Jesus said, then the children are exempt. Obviously, he's drawn a correlation between who is his father, right? Him. But also, you know, it's, and who are the children? It's Jesus and the disciples. And so, of course, they're exempt from the tax. But just so there's no problems, no violation of the law, he has Peter go out and catch a fish. And inside that fish's mouth is a four drachma coin. Now, interestingly enough, we are never actually seen, seen this take place, right? All of this happens off screen. Jesus just tells Peter this. And then we, as the audience, I think, can presume that it happens, right? We don't actually see it happen. We don't know if it, uh, if if when it occurs. But we assume that you know, right after this, Peter Peter goes out. He catches the fish. It has the four drachma coin, and he pays the tax. So why would Matthew include this story? Right? Why is it in there in the first place? Well, it says two things about Jesus that are really important for Matthew. You have to remember that each of the gospel writers focuses on something different about Jesus in order to highlight what his mission is and part of what his mission is, right? So Luke focuses a lot on Jesus's interaction with the outcasts and the poor. John focuses a lot on just like who Jesus is as a, as a, as a man, right? And as God, what, what does that mean for all of us? What, what did he accomplish on the cross, right? That's John's big thing. Of course, all of them talk about it, right? All of them mention all these things, but they have their own little focuses. And even John at the end of his gospel says, you know, a lot more stuff happened than just what I've written. But, you know, if I were to write down everything, you could fill a whole library with it. So he's just keeping it concise. And the same thing with all the others. Right? They focus on what they want. So why did Matthew include this story? Well, it tells us something about Jesus. Firstly, it tells us he's divine and that he's God, right? Because he knows what's going on around him. He, and he's able to create a coin out of a fish's mouth, right? And so he has this, this type of power. Now, the question there is, why did he choose to do it through the mouth of a fish, right? Why did he, why did he do it through that reason rather than through, you know, just snapping his fingers and the coin just appearing? Well, I think that says a lot about God's character. Uh, you notice that God usually works throughout the Bible through acts of nature, uh, through these things that require effort on, on, uh, uh, the part of, uh, not on our part in the sense of like us doing things, but rather like effort in the sense of going through something, right? And that having a meaning to it. Uh, and of course, fish is a symbolic, uh, is symbolic meaning for that. Um, and so he, he has, he has Peter go with that. So he has God, right? He's God because he's able to do these types of things. He's able to know what's going on. So that's really important to Matthew. 
Step two, or reason two, why Matthew probably includes this story is because this has to do with temple law. And a big thing for Matthew as a gospel writer is Jesus' fulfillment and uh, uh, not only of the, of the prophecies about the Messiah, not only fulfillment of messianic prophecies, but also fulfillment of temple law and uh, the strictures of the Old Testament. So he's big on, on showing that Jesus is a Jewish Messiah, right? He came as the Messiah, the, the promised one in the Old Testament, and he fulfilled the law, right? He did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And so he comes, and what does he do? Does he just say that this tax is, is needless and unnecessary? No, he doesn't, right? And that's because Jesus is the fulfillment of the law, right? He, so he, what Matthew is pointing out, he's like, ah, you have to remember, Jesus isn't saying that the Old Testament law was, it was just abolished when he came, right? He actually had his disciples pay attention to it, right? As long as the spirit of the law was followed and not, you know, the, the, the traditions of men around the Sabbath and stuff like that. And so he still pays the tax, even though, obviously, being God, he has no reason to pay the tax, right? It's his temple. Why, why should he have to pay uh, to, for its upkeep or whatever? And same thing for his, for his children and, you know, the disciples. And so that's why uh, Jesus uh, engages in this. That's why Matthew bothered to remember this and write it down, was to show something important about Jesus and what he, he promised. So it's a weird story because we don't really understand the point of, why Jesus does this through a fish's mouth? Why doesn't he just snap his fingers? Why did Matthew include this at all when there might be other things to talk about? But it, really the reason it's included and the reason uh, that Matthew would remember this about Jesus is because Jesus is using this as, as a moment to share what it is about himself. So that, that's important. So that's, that's why it's there. It's a good question. Uh, I could probably dig into it further. I had a sermon written on this actual topic before the right when the pandemic hit. So I saved it somewhere in my office, and maybe one day I actually will give it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So, um, yeah, hope all of you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday, and I will see you next week for more Theologues and, of course, Sunday for church. Peace out.